Next, we will discuss a special type of discrete random variables called binomial. Let's start with the definition. A binomial experiment is an experiment that has exactly two outcomes. For example, tossing a coin is a binomial experiment with two outcomes, heads and tails. However, rolling a die and observing an outcome is not a binomial experiment because there are six possible outcomes. Another example, going to work and observing the tardiness is a binomial experiment with two outcomes, late and on time. However, asking a randomly selected person how many credit cards they have is not a binomial experiment with two outcomes because the person may have any number of cards, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Why binomial experiments are so important? Because any experiment with any number of outcomes can be thought of as a binomial experiment by considering an event E, then for that experiment we have two possible outcomes, E and not E. For example, rolling a die can be thought of as a binomial experiment by considering the two complementary events, even and odd, or 6 and something other than 6, and many others. Another example, asking a randomly selected person how many credit cards they have can be thought of as a binomial experiment by considering two complementary events, none and at least one. There are many other examples of binomial experiments. For example, a randomly selected patient either dies or survives. A randomly selected store visitor either makes a purchase or not. A randomly selected passenger either arrives on time or late and misses the flight. A randomly selected applicant has master's degree or not. A randomly selected student graduates in four years or not. And there are many others. For a binomial experiment, we usually label one outcome as a success and the other one as a failure, which is the complement of success. The probability of success is then labeled P, and the probability of a failure is labeled Q, which is the by a complementary rule can always be computed by subtracting P from 1. Note that success may not be associated with a literal success, but in any case, the failure is the opposite or the complementary event of success. For example, for a randomly selected patient, we can label S the event in which the patient dies. In this case, F is the event in which the patient survives. For a randomly selected store visitor, we can label S the event in which a purchase is made. In this case, F will be the event in which the purchase was not made. For a randomly selected passenger, we can label S the event in which the passenger arrives on time. Then F will be the event in which the passenger is late. We continue with the following definition. If the same binomial experiment is performed as a sequence of n independent experiments, then such sequence is called n Bernoulli trials. The key word here is independent which means that there shouldn't be any dependency between the different instances of the experiment. For example, if we consider a group of 10 patients and track whether they survive or not, we have 10 Bernoulli trials. If we consider a group of 100 store visitors and track whether they made a purchase or not, we have 100 Bernoulli trials. If we consider 200 passengers and track whether they show up on time or late, we have 200 Bernoulli trials. If we consider 1,000 students and track whether they graduate in four years or more, we have 1,000 Bernoulli trials. Next, we are going to establish the following two facts. Fact number one. A binomial experiment can be simulated by a toss of an unfair coin, for which S is the event in which the toss results in heads, 
and f is the event in which the toss results in tails. And the probability of success then will be equal to the probability of heads and labeled as p, and the probability of failure will be the same as the probability of tails and labeled as q. Fact number two. A sequence of n Bernoulli trials then can be simulated by n tosses of an unfair coin, for which we have already established the following formula for finding the probability of k heads among n tosses. Next, let's consider n Bernoulli trials of a binomial experiment with the probability of success p and the probability of failure q. Before performing the binomial experiment n times, it is impossible to know the total number of successes among those n trials. Therefore, the number of successes depends on a chance. If we let x be the number of successes among n Bernoulli trials, then x satisfies the definition of a discrete random variable. Why discrete? Because the possible number of successes is any number between 0 and up to n. And just like for any discrete random variable, we can construct the probability distribution table for x by listing all of its possible values side by side with their probabilities. If a binomial experiment can be simulated by a toss of a fair coin with the probability of success p and the probability of failure q, then the probability of x being equal to some value k is the same as the probability of having k heads among n tosses for which we already established the formula. The significance of this formula is that now we can compute the probabilities of each outcome by simply evaluating the formula for different values of k. So the entire distribution table can be computed from just two values, n and p. This variable x is called a binomial random variable with parameters n and p, and is denoted in the following way. For example, for a binomial random variable x with parameters n equals 3 and p equals 0 0.6, we construct the probability distribution table by replacing n with 3, p with 0 0.6, and k with every value from 0 to 3. Just like with any other discrete random variable, we can also create the probability histogram and use it along with the probability distribution table. Before we move on, the following relation can be observed between the shape of the histogram and the value of p, which is one of the parameters of the variable. Now, we can use the probability distribution table and the histogram to find the probabilities of a variety of events. Let's find the probability of x being greater than or equal to 2. To find the probability, we first identify the event in the probability distribution table and the histogram, and then add the corresponding probabilities to get the answer, in this case 0 0.648. The good news is that rarely one has to compute these probabilities by hand. Another task that we can do for a discrete random variable, and binomial random variables are not an exception, is to compute the mean, variance, and standard deviation. We can compute these values using the same approach as previously developed. However, luckily for us, there is an easier way that allows us to simply use the following formulas to compute the mean, variance, and standard deviation. In our example, the mean is equal to 3 times 0 0.6, which is 1.8. The variance is 3 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, which is 7.2. And finally, the standard deviation is the square root of 7.2, which is 2.68. In summary, for any binomial random variable with parameters n and p, the mean, variance, and standard deviation can be computed using the formulas. Let's do another example. For a binomial random variable with n 150 and p 0 0.9, let's find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. The mean is equal to 150 times 0 0.9, which is 135. The variance 
is 150 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, which is 13 and a half. And the standard deviation is the square root of 13 and a half, which is 3.67. As a result, we would expect 135 successes among 150 Bernoulli trials with the probability of success 0 0.9. We discussed a special type of discrete random variables, called binomial random variables, for which we developed a number of formulas that allow us to compute the mean and standard deviation, along with the probabilities of a variety of events.